all right, I have no idea, like, what I'm going to do. Like, I didn't prep this ahead of time. But, uh, I guess just for the YouTube intro, welcome, guys. This is going to be my 1v1 Nomad tier list, as we do have the Wandering Warriors uh, tournament going on right now. And so, 1v1 Nomad, obviously a pretty relevant uh, game type. And, yeah, just going to go through all the civs, probably try and hit on, uh, hit on them pretty quickly. Got a lot of civs in the game right now. Uh, but this is going to be with mostly focused on the map Nomad itself, uh, as opposed to like the other maps we see in Wandering Warriors Cup, because they all have their own uh, intricacies, I guess you could call it. But a lot of the themes I talk about are going to be applicable on all the, the various uh, map types. So with that in mind, you know, S tier, top picks, these are the ones that are actually likely to get banned in... Uh, Wandering Warriors as the tournament progresses because the most popular civs get banned each round. A tier are probably the civs you're going to see the most of just because the S tier civs get banned. B tier civs are like, they're good civs, but they don't really have anything that makes them excel, especially on Nomad. Uh, C tier are civs that might still have some situational use, but uh, perhaps like some of their important eco or military bonuses don't uh, really apply as much. Don't worry, don't worry, I'll scroll. Oh, here. For some reason, I turned Twitch chat off. Ram blue, greater than script blue. We'll see, we'll see. Oh yeah, that's right. Twitch chat isn't, uh, isn't working for some reason. Whatever. Uh, and D-tier obviously can be the worst six. With that in mind, let's get into this. Aztecs... Probably C-tier. Not really... Actually, I can just move my face. Then we go full professional mode F11. There we are. Yeah, Aztecs, not really the greatest Nomad Civ in the world. They still can have some really strong timings. Like if they get to Castle Age, uh, go for like a Monk Siege push with Eagle Scouts. And, you know, that can be good. But the extra carry capacity is, for your villagers, it's mostly a farming bonus. So that's not really as applicable on Nomad where you want to go uh, for fishing ships most of the time. So again, it's a civilization that it doesn't excel on Nomad, but it can still have its moments where they can be good. Uh, Berbers. Uh, let's put them in A tier for now. Uh, the faster moving villagers is really nice because you can oftentimes, you know, congregate everybody and get to your town center faster. Which is pretty useful. Uh, and, you know, it's just getting that early eco advantage. And then beyond that, faster moving ships is great. We just saw that in the game uh, that uh, I was casting earlier where you can just micro down your opponent's ships more easily. And then uh, you just have your whole array of strong Berber options, knights in mid game, uh, camel archers can be great and all of that good stuff. Not quite S tier because you are still missing that uh, long-term eco bonus. Oh, hey, Twitch chat is now working. What do you know? I get to move my face even more. And he gets my hands involved, gesticulating. Anyway, uh, Bohemians. This is an interesting one. I'm going to say B tier for right now, but they could go higher. With their free gold mining and stone mining upgrades, they do have a really strong fast castle into castle drop, which is a dominant strategy on Nomad. Um, they don't really have much else in terms of like a, a wood eco bonus other than like the cheaper... Uh, blacksmiths, universities, and monasteries, which again can be really good. Like Hussite Wagon plus Monk can, you know, it's it's good, right? But they don't really have anything that's super mobile. Their knights are really bad. Their navy is, you know, pretty much generic. Actually, I wonder how much Castle Age chemistry can affect like war galleys, but it's usually by that time water is won or lost, right? You don't really see a ton of mid to late castle age navy fighting so let's just put them in b for now uh britain's also going to be going in the b tier they're a good sieve you know you can usually find some form of sheep or sheep equivalent to boost your early economy uh, and cheaper town centers again can be nice you just don't really have anything that like makes you excel on nomad especially like, Britons can do all of the things that they're good at, and Nomad doesn't really, like, as a map, doesn't hurt them in that. But they also don't have anything that really makes them excel on Nomad either. 
So just like a good solid sieve. Bulgarians. C tier. Krepos drops can be really good, but eh. You do actually technically start with more stone because you get your stone discount on your starting TC. So you're going to start with, uh, what, 300? No, not Sicilians. 250 stone. So, I mean, maybe. Like, you can build two watchtowers with that. You know, that could be something. But, you know, the free men and arms upgrade isn't really that useful or free swordsman upgrades in general and you don't have any sort of navy bonus or any, like, real eco bonus. So, mid-game aggression can be good. But otherwise, Bulgarian's not going to be doing that well. Actually, I'm kind of tempted to put them in D tier. We'll, we'll see where all the other civs fall. I reserve the right to change all of these later. Uh, Burgundians. C tier. Early wood cutting upgrades can be really nice in terms of just getting your navy going. Castle drop into Coustier can also be good. Uh, good night, Ensign Toast. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, like, yeah, Coustier are one of those strong, unique units that you can go go for a unique unit drop. Killed Catholics wasn't always that simple. Not always that simple. Uh, but still, like, they're not really excelling on Nomad. Into Donald Duck? What? That? Um, yeah. So I think Burgundian C tier is... is Pretty reasonable. Uh, Burmese. Actually going to be going in A tier. They're not like a super top sieve, but they're good. Nah, Burgundians aren't A tier. Not for Nomad. Um, yeah, I mean, you have a really strong castle drop into unique unit play with your Rombai. You have great monks. And your navy early on is actually pretty strong as well because you get the free lumberjack upgrades. They're actually a pretty good sieve. And just stomp water? Uh, I don't think that's it's not it's not that simple, I would say. Like maybe you could argue Burgundians for a B tier. But it would be like a low B tier, high C tier thing. Actually. Yeah, now that I think about it, Burgundians could definitely be justified into B tier. I think especially the breaker is that you can go for, uh, Castle Drop into Coustier, and that's really good. Uh, anyway, Byzantines, A tier. Uh, your faster attacking fire ships is super nice. You have great monks and great counter units, and Byzantines are just going to excel on pretty much every hybrid map. Not top tier, but again, really good. Celts. Going to be also in the B tier. Like Britons, like, Celts are good for all the reasons that Celts are normally good. But they don't really have anything that, like, is super too helpful on Nomad. Um, the faster working Lumberjacks is nice for your early navy. Uh, but that's really all you have going for you. Um, as far as, like, bonuses that would help you, especially on Nomad. Like, your cavalry isn't the greatest. Your archers aren't. Your monks aren't. So, you do need to, like... If you, if you get to, like, mid-castle age, it can be really difficult to actually get to Imperial Age. Because oftentimes you're under a lot of pressure at that point and can't easily defend. Yeah, uh, Byzantine Freetown Watch is definitely great as well, for sure. And extra HP for your docks and whatnot. So yeah, I think Celts are just going to be a solid B tier. Chinese are going to be D tier. Back in the day, they used to be S tier. But then all they needed to do is just change the Chinese so that they don't get their extra three villagers until you get your uh, town center up. So... With Chinese, you can't afford uh, the dock right away because you start with less wood. Uh, and it just really slows you down. Oftentimes, you won't even have all of the you know food you might need. And a lot of like what helped Chinese out in that regard was that they could go for... Um, they had their TC up faster so they could potentially get their villager production going sooner. You do so many irregular Pike Siege and Monk pushes on Nomad. Um, eh. I mean, Celts I definitely think are on the upper end of B tier, but I don't think they're quite A tier. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, Chinese. Just not a sieve that really excels on Nomad these days. Uh, it's just really hard to get onto the water early, and it, they are just pretty inconsistent. 
Uh, Cumin's also going to be in the D tier. Almost no way you can ever go for your second town center bonus because you're kind of already using your dock as a second town center with the creation of uh, fishing ships early on. Uh, cheaper ranges and stables is great, and you do have the castle drop into Kipchoks, which is also good potentially. Uh, but you don't have any eco bonus, and you have nothing to help you out on water. And I feel like... Eh... Aztecs still feel like they're a bit stronger than humans. I, I do like the FC Kipchak play, though. Hmm... You know what? I, I do like FC Kipchaks. And the cheaper ranges can be nice as well, so... Yeah, let's put them in C tier for now. Ethiopians, also going to be in B tier. Again, Ethiopians are good for all the reasons Ethiopians are normally good, but don't have anything that really makes them excel, especially on Nomad. Uh, the free resources upon reaching the next age can be nice. <laughs> Hun's easy S plus tier. Of course, Halas. Uh, but yeah, again, nothing that really puts them over the top uh, and makes them excel on the map, especially. Franks. Um, hey, Baskets. Probably C tier as well. You can't always get Forge Bushes, although that is more common than it used to be. And the free farm upgrades, again, it's not as useful when you're wanting to use a lot of fishing ships. You don't have anything to really help you out for your navy. Uh, the cheap castles can be really good in this situation, or in, in those sorts of situations, but... Hmm, yeah. They're, they're still not a civilization that is going to excel, especially on Nomad. Like, they have bonuses that kind of work against the typical Nomad strengths. Goths. Probably D tier. Their early Dark Age rushing shenanigans aren't really going to be doing too well on Nomad. <laughs> you can't get your free, uh, you know, loom and go for the villager fights these days. Yeah, that's true, Folder. But this is about, you know, Water Nomad. Yeah, I mean, Goths just don't really have anything that would help them a lot on Nomad. They don't have anything to help their uh, early navy or fish boom, and even getting to Castle Edge and going for a castle drop into Huskarls, like, that's usually not too viable, just because Huskarls are so expensive. So, yeah, just not, not the greatest Nomad Civ. Huns, also D tier, because, uh, again, you start with less wood, so you can't build the dock right away and go for early fishing ships, which means that you are actually behind most civilizations when it comes to early economy, which is not at all the case on uh, land maps, of course, but... On Nomad in particular, it's just uh, not super great. Like, I mean, yeah, if you can survive till mid-game, if you can survive till mid-game, yeah, then you can make stuff work. It's not like the D-tier civs, like, you can't win with them. It's just that they're not super ideal, right? Yeah, exactly. Incas. I guess Incas also get B tier. Again, we're looking at a sieve that they don't really have anything special going for them on Nomad, but Nomad also doesn't really hurt them in any real way. I mean, Incas could just do the things that Incas normally do. Yeah, well, that's that's just how it is, Hecturnus. Cheaper towers and castles can be nice. Uh, Eagle Scouts, of course, can be really strong options as well. Um... You do get your free llama once the town center is completed, and that's always nice. Gives you a little bit of a uh, little bit more consistency in your early food food income. So maybe that's a little bit of a bump going for them on Nomad maps, but everything else is just pretty pretty standard. So B tier makes sense. Indians, uh, similar deal. You're gonna have a lot of B tier civs, I guess. Yep, and the the house savings are, are nice as well. I wouldn't say they're. I mean, they're easily better than Aztecs, but we'll see once we get to Mayans. Um, Indians, again, we're looking at a sieve that the cheaper villagers, it's always going to be nice. Uh, the faster working fishermen can uh, work as well as oftentimes you'll have one of your villagers go and, um, you know, you build your dock right away and then you'll that villager will gather from uh, the shorefish. So that's nice for Indians as well. And beyond that, Indians are just going to do the things that Indians do fairly well. Italians, not a B-tier sieve, an A-tier sieve. Uh, pretty strong option. You might even have them near the top of A-tier if you really wanted to, like, mix these around. 
Um, I mean, they just are a great water sieve and hybrid sieve, right? Cheaper age up, cheaper fishing ships, cheaper dock techs, all really good. You have good monks, you can go knights, you can go archers. All of that is going to be good. You don't have anything that really, really puts you over the top in the early game, so they're not S tier. But other than that, Italians are good. Like, this is just a map that plays to the strengths of Italians. Bohemians easy A tier? Yeah, I'm I'm not too sure. I feel like they aren't really going to excel on water is the thing. So it's like, they don't have anything in the Dark Age, and they have nothing that really helps them on water. So, like, I'd still prefer Burmese, but if you, like, really wanted to put Bohemians in A tier, I, like, I wouldn't think you're insane. Anyway, uh, for similar reasons, Japanese are going to be in A tier. Uh, this is a map where fish booming can be very strong. Cheaper drop-off sites, again, very helpful. Have a great feudal eco. Uh, I mean, they have a great golden stone feudal eco. Uh, I don't know. They're gonna be really good against non-redemption sieves. That like that's definitely something to consider. So maybe we can put Bohemians in A tier. All right, you convince me. Uh, Khmer are going to be in C tier. You, you do benefit a lot from not needing to build specific buildings to get to the next age. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but you don't really want to do a lot of farming on Nomad, at least, at least not until much later on. And that's like a huge part of the strength of Khmer. And then other than that, you don't really have anything to help you out in terms of your water control or anything like that. Koreans, easy A tier. Extra villager line of sight. It's a great bonus. You can almost always get a good... Uh, initial town center drop location you'll be able to see your resources more comfortably um, like you can find those extra sheep to help you scout all of that's good cheaper warships good turtle ships can be good actually because there isn't that much room to maneuver and then of course they also have a great castle drop into unique unit with uh, the war wagon yeah i know chinese went from the, the top to the bottom um they still don't really have like an eco bonus so and nothing to like really really help out their dark age a ton so i don't think they're s tier but i do think they're actually at the upper end of a tier like they are a really solid so speaking of s tier though lithuanians will be in the s tier first s tier sieve starting with 150 food means that you are much 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 less likely to have idle tc time in the early game which can be a total killer on nomad maps like, you just get so much more of a consistent start. You can go for your fishing ships faster than most civilizations. And beyond that, you just get that early eco lead mid-game. You can go collect some relics and then be super scary as well. Oh, and I remember Jack Raggers. That was, those were scary times. Scary times. Yes, Algirdas would be proud. Vitatos would have been like, all right. <laughs> yeah, Lithuanian's definitely S tier. M -m -m Magyar C tier. They don't really have anything that makes them especially good or bad on Nomad, except for the fact that, like, early Feudal Age aggression isn't quite as good, and they don't really have the timing or even eco bonuses that the B-tier civs have. So, yeah, I think Magyars are pretty comfortably in C-tier. Will this go to YouTube? Yes. Don't you worry. And yes, folder I remember. Uh, Malay will also be in the A-tier. Hun's D-tier? Of course they're in D-tier. This is for regular Nomad. Wolves in one hit? Yeah, but there aren't any wolves on Nomad. Um, Yeah, Malay. Uh, even this extra dock line of sight can be nice. People got mad. Um, Age up bonus also really good in a situation where... Wait, Viper thinks Malay are bad on Nomad? But yeah, I mean, like, you can get a better eco upon, uh, you know, clicking up to Feudal Age, and then you can go for crossbowmen, monks, elephants, all that stuff. You have a good navy. Um, harbors can work in, like, extended games, uh, especially if there's, like, you know, in a lot of the uh, WWC maps, there's, like, the pond in the middle, or, like, lake, and you can just kind of <laughs> ring that area with harbors if the game goes that long. So yeah, Malay, definitely an A-tier sieve, but still nothing that really helps you out in, like, the super early game. Fun fact, all of the civs that are in S tier have a really, really strong early Dark Age bonus. Speaking of which, Malians, S tier. 
Malians are one of the two civilizations that can go for a fishing ship right away because you save wood on your initial town center and your initial dock. So what you can do is you can have two of your villagers go build a town center, your one villager build a dock, and then have that villager build a house, and then you can train a fishing ship right away. And that is, uh, it just gives you an insane eco early on. <laughs> Don't you worry, we'll get to Spanish, we'll get to Spanish. But with prep posts, um, I guess the thing with Bulgarians is that they don't really have, like, missing crossbowmen feels pretty crappy. But I, I, I see what you mean. Magyars and Bulgarians would probably be in the same tier. But I feel like that's more knocking Magyars down to D tier. Nah, maybe, maybe bumping up Bulgarians. I started with Bulgarians in C tier. Yeah, Malians, uh, super broad tech tree. You can go for pretty much any option you feel like. Uh, and just a fantastic overall sieve. Uh, Mayans. M -m 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 Mayans. You don't get your villager, uh, uh, extra villager to build your TC a bit faster anymore. Um, but they're still a good sieve overall. I think a solid B tier. Longer lasting resources is great when you're, you know, with a lot of different, uh, you know, huntables and sheep and berries and stuff like that. And you're just really trying to make your early food sources uh, last. It even works with your fish, by the way. Fast castle plumes can be really good as well. Um, they don't really have, I think, enough to help them, like, win water early uh, to bump them up into A tier. But, because, like, all of the other sieves here, except bo Bohemians, can win water like really effectively and bohemians have a stronger like fast castle unique unit play uh, mongols mongols are a really weird one i'm not uh i'm just not too sure because it's like okay if you can get a bunch of boars early then they can jump up to a tier but if you don't get a bunch of boars then they're like c tier so i guess we should put them in b tier to even them out just with the knowledge that Mongols, depending on how much hunt you get, can move up and down a lot. Because getting up to Feudal Age quickly means that you can really win control of water. And then mid-game, yeah, you're kind of a little bit on the weaker side. But if you have won water, it means that in mid-game you have a fishing ship eco advantage. Which really helps make up for the fact that Mongols don't have an eco bonus at that stage in the game. And then you can sort of uh, transition on to the later stages of the game where Mangudai are going to kill everything. Because yes, Mangudai are great on Nomad, as they are on almost every map. Persians, going to be up in the S tier. Same reasons as Malians. Uh, because of your extra starting resources, you are able to build a fishing ship right away. Insanely good for your eco. Extra t uh, HP for your town centers and docks, also really great. <laughs> I'm glad, Jacob Chip. Uh, it'll be up on YouTube tomorrow. So yeah, Persians, super strong eco, great on hybrid maps, uh, and then just getting that early fishing ship advantage. Just does easily put them into the S tier. Poles. Probably D tier. Like your main eco bonus is the full works and the whole farming thing. And you just can't even do that on Nomad. You can almost never even like find the space to get a good full work farming eco. I mean, yeah, I guess they are good in villager fights. But you do need your TC up for that, and actually you have a five-minute treaty on Normal Nomad, but you don't in WWC, so... Eh. Like, you can go for, like, a castle drop, and then, like, Obux can work, but... I still don't think they're... Like, uh, their tower rush is okay in this situation. Because generating gold from mining stone, I guess maybe you can go for towers and, like, ships a bit more easily, but... I feel like all these other civs have better options. Uh, Portuguese, A tier. Uh, they have a great navy. And they have a fantastic castle drop into unique unit with their organ guns. They have good monks, knights, archers, all that stuff. Um, their team bonus doesn't really matter in 1v1s, uh, but know that they are a fantastic civ in team games because the free cartography from Dark Age is really important. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Portuguese are just... They're great on uh, on water and hybrid maps for the same reasons that like all of these civs are. Saracens B tier, 
again, I mean, they do have the faster attacking galleys, which can be great. Um, and the cheaper market and market usage can also be good. But I still don't think it, they're quite good enough to be in the A tier. I definitely would put them at the very high end of B tier. Um, but yeah, I don't think they're they're quite there for A tier. They don't have anything in the, in the Dark Age, which is kind of unfortunate. And you're often going fire galleys uh, if you're like really close in terms of docks. And that, you know, doesn't help you with your galley play. So Saracens, yeah, definitely high B tier, not A tier, I think. Uh, Sicilians. Um, yeah, I think B tier, but again, very, very high B tier. Uh, I mean, you have a really strong castle drop potential. Um, but remember that you don't get to build your starting TC faster. You used to be able to do that, and that made them even better than old Chinese. So that was taken away. Uh, but beyond that, I mean, like, your navy is, like, okay. Cheaper transport ships don't really help you out. Uh, it can be a lifesaver for sure, but I don't think it's just quite as consistently good to be put in A tier. Uh... But yeah, as strong as like a castle drop is, uh, sergeants aren't really the greatest like castle drop into unique unit type play because they're just kind of slow and melee units. So like you can't really make a ton of them without a strong eco. They don't have a very high unit retention rate, which is why like the cav archer types of unique units tend to be the best, uh, or just like long range units. Cav archers, janissaries, um, organ guns, like all those can be great. Um, but yeah, Sicilian still, I think, solid option. They don't get, uh, they also don't get to take advantage of their, uh, double farming power upgrades as effectively, because again, you're focusing on fishing. Speaking of farming upgrades, Slavs, yeah, they're going in the D tier. Yeah, e exactly, but they don't have that anymore. Slav, their main eco bonus is farming. You want to be using fishing ships on Nomad early on. They don't have a good castle drop into unique unit. Um, their monks are good. I mean, their knights can work, but there are lots of situations where Slavs are good. Nomad isn't really one of them. Spanish, as people were saying earlier, going to be S tier. You do have a very powerful Dark Age because you build your town center faster. That bonus does apply in this situation. So you're usually like a villager and a half to two villagers ahead of most civs. And then when you're in that situation, um, I have nothing to offer on Nomad till Castle Drop. Yeah, but Sicilians can still do most of the things that Sicilians are, uh, are are good at. So I think that maybe they're like in the middle of the B tier, but I still think they're fine. Uh, and you also have Donjons, which can be pretty useful as well. Um, but yeah, Spanish, obviously one of the best unique units to follow up a Castle Drop, which you can also build faster. And Spanish, if you can get a good early eco, um, Civ just has a super broad tech tree. Conquistadors are amazing. Um, even in late game, cannon galleons can totally work because most of the uh, map is bombardable. But yeah, Spanish, don't think I need to really talk too much about why they're super insane Nomad Civ. Uh, Tater Tots. Also going to be in B tier. Hammer down a little bit. What? No. <laughs> Castle drop into the conks is insane. Um, longer lasting huntables does mean that you can often uh, have a bit of a smoother dark age. And the free thumb ring can be nice. But again, it's nothing that really makes you super insanely good on, uh, on nomad maps. From forgetting buildings? Nah, I still think Chimera's E tier. But we'll go over this once we get through the civs. Uh, but yeah, Totters, I think, just solid middle of the pack, so. Teuton's gonna be in D tier. Similar reason as Slavs, this is just not the sort of map that they excel on. You don't really get to use your farming bonus. Um, at least not until later on. And then, yeah, you don't have anything that really help you win water. It's not like you want to go for, like, a castle drop with them. Your monk, you know, you can go for, like, a monk siege push with fine, and so can Slavs, but again, it's not... It's not what you love, right? Yes. You definitely can. Uh, Turks. 
Also going to be in B tier. The thing is, on Nomad, more often than most other maps, you can find yourself in a situation where you don't have any gold or don't have any stone, in which case, you know, Turks are really sad. But um, the faster working gold miners is very nice. And uh, Janissaries are going to be one of the best castle drop unique unit strategies out there. Um, free light cab can also be pretty helpful uh, if it comes to like lots of monks. Um, well, it's not about late game navy most of the time. It's about like early game navy and fish boom. C tier. Eh, I mean, Janet, like, I don't know. Janies are good. But yeah, there are situations where you just don't get much gold. And that's really crappy. Don't have really any other eco bonus. It's like a consistency issue, right? So maybe this Indian, or sorry, Turks deserve to be in C tier simply because they're inconsistent, whereas all of the B tier civs are consistent, except Mongols, but there's they have a higher peak in my opinion. But they'd be high C tier. You don't get you have a better eco. No, Spanish usually have a really good eco because of the faster uh, building TC and Dark Age. Uh, Vietnamese is going to be another uh, B tier option. Not quite good enough in like early water control to make it to A tier, but again, you do have a bit of an eco bonus. You get to see where your opponent's town center is uh, once they complete it, which is sick. But uh, yeah, you know, rattan archers can be really great as well, but you don't really have anything to help you uh, win water super effectively. Uh, you can't usually beat um, you know stronger naval sieves, but they're they're still a pretty decent option. And Vikings, Vikings, Vikings. A or B tier. Maybe B tier. Cheaper dock is nice. Giant square where the enemy is. Uh, yeah, but that's not in uh, WWC. And this is kind of with WWC in mind. But yeah, no fire galleys can be a bit of an issue. Longboats can be really good. But of course, the big Viking eco bonus is your free wheelbarrow and handcart, which isn't really as uh, impactful when you don't have that many farms early on. So that is a little bit uh, trickier. And then you don't really have the best tech tree in the world. But I still think they're pretty decent. All right, so do we want to revise this at all? I think our, uh, I like the S tier I knew going into this. I knew that it would be exactly those four sieves. A tier... Bohemians still feel a little suspect to me, but they do have a lot of like insanely good matchups, and everybody else is just, I think, a, a really consistent, safe choice. Uh, B tier, I like all of these civs in B tier. I think that's fine. C and D tier, I definitely feel a little eh about, like, because there are situations where, like, all of these civs can shine. Um, it's just like you don't get those as often and you just would not feel happy about randoming any of these sieves. So like, honestly, if you like, other than maybe like Chinese and Huns, like they're definitely D tier. Like if you really like wanted to switch these sieves around a lot, I mean, I can understand that. Um, so yeah, I'm going to be happy with this tier list. This can be my 1v1 Nomad tier list, guys. So definitely let me know in the comments if you're watching this on YouTube what you think. Obviously Twitch chat's already been telling me what they think. And uh, now we're dropping frames for no reason. Awesome. Great. So yeah, what, a, what a great way to end the video and or the stream.